Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the topic of today's discussion is preventive and interceptive orthodontics. As we all know that uh, this saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure means prevention is always better than cure. So those things that can be prevented at an early stage will require less effort and uh, will require less effort and less amount of time and all the problems that are going we are going to encounter later on in if we want the cure for that particular thing. An example, uh, this example will set it straight as we have seen that it was a serious, uh, uh, what you can say, security lapse from the Indian side and this resulted in such a, then this resulted into such a uh, disaster in the year 2009. Now, let's come to the uh, main topic and that is preventive orthodontics. Today we are going to discuss the difference between preventive and interceptive orthodontics. As Mr. Graeber in the year 1966 has defined it as the action that is taken to preserve the integrity of what appears to be a normal occlusion at a specific time. Prophet and Ackerman in the year 1980 has defined it as a prevention of potential interference with occlusal development. The proper definition that has been given by Indian Orthodontic Society is it is defined as that phase of the science and art of orthodontics employed to recognize and eliminate potential irregularities and malpositions of the developing dentofacial complexes. This is the proper definition that is given. And the definition for interceptive orthodontics is it is defined as that phase of the science and art of orthodontics employed to recognize and eliminate potential irregularities and malpositions of the developing dentofacial complexes. Now the basic difference between the two is that the preventive or most of the procedures that we are going to discuss are uh, can be undertaken in preventive as well as in inter interceptive orthodontics but the only difference that is uh, there is the timing that is we select to do that particular procedure. Preventive orthodontics are the procedures that that are undertaken in anticipation of the development of a problem, whereas interceptive orthodontic uh, orthodontic procedures are the same, same, maybe the same procedures which are taken when the problem has already started to manifest. Now, these are some of the procedures that we undertake in uh, in preventive orthodontics. Now, one thing I would like to make it clear that orthodontics doesn't always mean that it is concerned with wires and bites and all those things. Uh, orthodontics is every procedure that is taken to prevent malocclusion or to correct malocclusion or to, in other words to bring the teeth into their proper physiologic positions. Now preventive orthodontics starts first of all with the first point and that is patient or parent education. Even before when the birth has taken place the parents should be given proper uh, education about how to take care of themselves during the pregnancy means especially the mother and also when the child is when the child will take birth how to take care of the initial stages of the uh, growth and development of that particular child especially the gum pads and the initial uh, set of teeth so the first point is it is correct parent and patient education that includes the maintenance of their own oral cavity as well as the diet that is going to affect the future dentition of the developing child. The second is caries control. We all know that the <coughs> caries is very prevalent in any society especially in modern society when we are uh, consuming so much of refined sugars and when the caries process takes place. Uh, and if it is in proximal region, then what happens is there is decrease in the proximal uh, uh, dimension of the tooth. Decrease of the proximal dimension of the tooth means there is decrease in mesodistal length of the tooth. So what happens is the tooth posterior to that tooth that is carious, it moves or it migrates marginally towards the anterior side and thus it is coming out of its uh, normal physiologic position. So. Proximal caries will result into some orthodontic pro problem in future. So prevention of caries or caries control is of utmost importance. That is the second most important point in preventive orthodontics. The third is care of deciduous dentition. 
that is similar to the same process means as soon as the uh, caries has taken place we should it is the duty of the dentist to uh, correct that caries part and then do it uh, restore it with the suitable restorative procedure uh, with uh, su suitable restorative material management of ankylosed teeth so many times we uh, encounter ankylosed teeth ankylosed teeth are those teeth that are fixed with the bone and they are not ready to uh, exfoliate those deciduous teeth so it is the duty of the dentist to identify that uh, ankylosed teeth and remove them at as early as possible because if that tooth is remaining there for a uh, for an extended period of time it will cause malocclusion the fifth point is maintenance of quadrant twice tooth shedding timetable means uh, this means that if a tooth of one side has exfoliated then the tooth of the contralateral side in the same arch should get exfoliated or should be removed within not more than 3 months means within 3 months that the similar tooth of the other side should be removed or should get exfoliated in a natural process in a natural way so it is called as the maintenance of quadrant tooth shedding timetable because if it doesn't occur then what happens is uh, there is again we can consider it to be a retained tooth and then it will cause migration of the midline means midline uh, deviation of the midline then comes correction uh, prevention of oral habits now prevention of oral habits is a very important thing that we are going to encounter in uh, uh, children these days any habit any pressure habit that the child is uh, practicing at the moment it is the need of the it is the duty of the dentist to stop it as early as possible because abnormal pressure will result into abnormal pressure on the developing dentofacial complex ultimately producing malocclusion correction next step is we'll uh, deal with in detail uh, about the prevention of oral habits in detail when later on i am just enumerating the various uh, <coughs> procedures that are taken in preventive orthodontics then the next point is correction of occlusal equilibrium if there are any occlusal prematurities as you all know that the oral cavity is a very unique part of the body uh, if we consider it as a whole that it consists of the oral cavity in which the teeth they come into contact with each other during mastication and even without mastication without when the person is not, is not masticating so that is the one point of contact between the maxilla and the mandible and the other point of contact of the maxilla and mandible is TMJ temporomandibular joint so any occlusal prematurities that are present in uh, the dentition are going to affect the developing TMJ and vice versa means if there is any deformity or if there is any abnormality in the TMJ that is going to uh, show its manifestation in the developing dentofacial complex or uh, in the developing dentition so correction of occlusal equilibrium is the easiest thing that we can do so that its ill effect doesn't pass on to the developing uh, temporomandibular joint then the next point is extraction of supernumerary tooth retained root stems retained deciduous teeth this is again very important because these retained supernumerary tooth or teeth and retained root stems they are going to block the path of uh, the succeeding uh, tooth that is going to erupt subs subsequently and they might even deflect the erupting succeeding tooth into out of occlusion or in some other place so it is uh, right to see that if there is presence of any supernumerary tooth or root stems or there are retained deciduous teeth they should be removed but there is a point of caution here that before you are planning to extract any retained deciduous teeth it is better it is always mandatory to take the uh, x-ray so that you may not do the blunder of extracting the retained deciduous tooth when even when the succeeding tooth is absent so always confirm that there is presence of succeeding tooth and since it is blocking the super uh, the uh, deciduous tooth is blocking the proper eruption of succeeding tooth so it is a duty of the dentist to remo remove that succeeding of the, uh, remove that deciduous tooth then comes the next point that is space maintenance if any due to inadvertent uh, conditions we have lost a deciduous tooth at an early stage it is the duty of the dentist to maintain that space for the succeeding tooth to erupt properly 
then some soft tissue management like management of renal attachments high uh, renal attachment or link, uh, link uh, that is called label uh, 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 frenum attachment which is very high that results into midline diastema similarly ankyloglossia or lingual frenum which is thick in nature then it will again produce the tongue to be placed very deep into the oral cavity and there will be abnormality in the pressure of the thing uh, of the <coughs> oral cavity so these were some of the Mm, procedures that we undertake in preventive orthodontics. In the next lecture, I will tell you something about what are the procedures that we take in interceptive orthodontics. Thank you.